delivered this morning, so y'all bear with me. I'm not going to preach. I'm going to teach just the short little teaching here, and uh, I hope it works right. I hope God just, that's what He wants here this morning. Lord, amen. One time, uh, y'all heard me talk about old Billy Bob a whole lot. Now, this ain't really a big Billy Bob tale, but it's about one of his cousins, and uh, old Billy Bob's name's Hambone, Hambone Johnson. Now, Hambone, he was sort of on the dark side of the family. He wasn't one of the elite. He was sort of in trouble all the time. In fact, he is old Hambone. He was, a, he was a burglar. That's what Hambone done. Wasn't a very good burglar, but he was a burglar. And Hambone had a problem. Hambone liked to drink. I mean, he was really liked to put it down. Old Hambone had been drinking, and he was past drinking. He was drunk. I'm talking about with him. If you're going to hide around a high stepping drunk, they'll do something like that. Now, he was high stepping and staggering everywhere. Now, old Hambone, he figured he would go and burglarize his house. It was St. Patrick's Day, and he figured everybody's out drinking green beer, and he could get in and out, and nobody would know him, you know, and he'd get by with it. So he started cruising around. He got in his back alley, and he saw his house there. He got up and he climbed up the post, got up on the deck, went through a bedroom window and said, Wow, this guy is blessed. This guy has so many things. So he got his little bag and started putting that guy's things in the bag. He was stealing everything he had. He got over and opened the drawer and there were two pistols there. And he said, Man, he's got two guns just like I've got. He put them two guns in that bag said, I've got them two guns. Man, this is good. Well, he went downstairs, and he said, Wow, he's got one of them wave radios just like I've got. I'll get that radio, and I'll pawn that thing. I'll have all kinds of money. He went through there, and he said, Wow, man, look at that. Stack of CDs. Man, they're just like I got at the house. I'm going to get them CDs. So he loads them CDs in there, and he's got his bag full. He's getting ready to go out the window. He said, Uh-oh. He said, I've left my fingerprints everywhere. <laughs> I've got a problem. <laughs> Old Hambone, he wasn't too smart. We well, got down there and he found him a newspaper. And he took that newspaper and he rolled it up over next to the curtains and went over next to the couch. And he set it on fire. He's going to burn the house down. So he sets it on fire and it's burning up. And he goes out the window and gets in his car and he said, Well, I've been drinking a little bit. Maybe I'll put this bag in the trunk. If they stop me, they'll see the evidence. So he drives off. Drives around about an hour, sobers up a little bit, and he's going to go home, you know, get lose his treasure. Pulls into his neighborhood, and there's a fire truck. He said, somebody's house is on fire. <laughs> he got on up a little bit closer to where he lived. His house was on fire. His house burning up. He said, my house is on fire. i got to get in. i got to get in. And the fireman said, no, it's total loss. You can't get in. A well, light come on, pong. You know it does sometimes in cartoons. Let me go look in the trunk. <laughs> well, it sure looks like my CDs. <laughs> he said, I finally realized that he burned his own house down. Poor old ham bone man. He gets a kick in the car, and the police officer comes up behind him and sees him, catches him with the evidence, and he goes down to the Hazel Green Jail. So that's where he's at right now. Poor old ham bone. Now the moral of the story is. Hambone had all kinds of blessings, had all kinds of treasure, but he didn't know he had it. He didn't recognize it, did he? He didn't realize all these things that he went and stole and thought was somebody else that was his already. So here we are. I think sometimes we as Christians don't realize how blessed we are. We're so blessed. I, I just want you to think about how blessed you are. You've got a roof over your head. Every one of us, I think, has got food to eat. Got a bed to sleep in. Go over and flip a switch on the wall and the lights come on. I mean, it's great, ain't it? We're blessed. I want to talk to you just a minute about the seven blessings that come from the cross when Jesus gives his life. Now, the first one is that. I'll just read the text here. Thank you, actually. You got me dialed mm -hmm. back in a little bit. Titus 3, 4 through 7. God, our Savior, showed us how good and kind he is. He saved us because of his mercy and not because of any good thing that we have done. God washed us by the power of the Holy Spirit and gave us new birth and a fresh beginning. 
God sent Jesus Christ, our Savior, to give us His Spirit. Jesus treated us much better than we deserve and made us acceptable to God and gave us the hope of eternal life. Now, the first thing I want to talk about, the first gift, I call them kingdom blessings, is blessings from the cross, is salvation. Because Jesus took my sins and your sins and nailed them on the cross because he shed his blood and because we believe that the Bible says because he did these things, we're saved, right? Everybody on the same page. That's what gets us saved, correct? Everybody, everybody with me? Everybody here? Okay. So you're saved here this morning, right? Can I convince you that you're not? Doc, can I convince you that you're not saved? Can I get up here and grab your salvation away from you and take it? No. Can't do that, can I? Can David get your salvation and come take it away? Can the devil come get your salvation and take it away? No. But it's a blessing because Jesus died that we're saved, right? Now, how many Jewish people do we have in here? Do we have any Jewish people in here? I don't think we have any, do we? When Jesus came to the earth, he came to save the Jews. Are we in agreement? I'm not getting out here in left field on here somewhere or running down some side street. He came to save the Jewish people. And I'm not a Jew. You're not a Jew. So we were sort of the wild olive tree over here, wasn't we, David? Yeah, unclean, dirty. Unclean, dirty, filthy Gentiles. That's what we were. But because Jesus come and hung on the cross and gave his life for us, we were grafted into the olive tree because of his work on the cross. We become acceptable to God because of the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. Therefore, we can become saved, become saved right? Who in here, the second blessing I want to talk about is healing. And I may get a little bit Shaky over here a little bit. Don't mean to. Do you believe that God can heal? Yes. Okay. Everybody believes that, right? I don't think I can convince you otherwise, can I? Do you believe God will heal? Now, sometimes we, we miss that one. What it says in the Word that by His stripes we was healed, we were healed. So this blessing that comes from the cross Salvation, adoption, and healing comes because of his work on Calvary. Because by his stripes, we were healed, right? And because we're adopted into the family of God, we become as if we were Jewish. So all the blessings of Abraham, all the blessings of the Old Testament fall upon us. And that says, in Psalms 91, that that junk ain't coming to my door. And if I believe that, David, it's just like believing, I'm saved. You ain't going to convince me I ain't. It's like I'm saying, I'm adopted into the family of God. You ain't going to convince me I ain't. I'm healed because Jesus said it in the book. So if he said it in the book, it's got to be true. No matter what I think the book says, I am healed by his stripes. So that is a blessing that we have right there. The blessing of being Praise human. God. There's another blessing we've got deliverance. When Jesus died on the cross, now all these things happened at the cross. I want you to understand. When Jesus died on the cross and he rose from the grave, he conquered death and hell. That means all the demons run in fear, right? And it means that the Lord's living in us. We have no fear of demons, right? What's the demon going to do to you? Your blood bond. He can't get over the blood. He can't get to you. If you will trust and believe in him. What kind of demons am I talking about? Pornography. That's one. 
If you're dealing with that today, God can take care of that because we have the power over that. Drug addiction, alcoholism, greed, lust, we have power over that because of what Jesus done on the cross. Where we run into a, you know, a problem or trouble is when we don't believe what the Word says. But He did that for us that we would be delivered. The next one's wealth. You mean God wants me to be wealthy? Yeah, God wants you to be wealthy. He don't want you to be in love with money, but he don't want you to be support. You ain't got two dimes to rub together either because he's expecting you to take that wealth that he gives you and reach out and help somebody that needs help. It's not to heap up on yourself. He gave Abraham wealth. Do you think Noah could have built a boat unless he had the money to buy the raw materials? That's a big boat. Abraham, all the kings around, looked up to him. Why? Because he was wealthy. And I'm not getting into name it and claim it. That's not what I'm saying today. But what I'm saying to you is God wants to bless you. He is the one that gives you the ability to obtain wealth. Not a new Mercedes, not a Beamer, but wealth. He might give you a Mercedes and a Beamer. I don't know. It's okay. Whatever God wants to give you, I'm happy for it. Well, more than you can ask for fun. That's right. More than I can even imagine. Well, now, the second blessing, or the sixth blessing is supernatural power. Now, we might get a little bit shaky. I mean, bear with me. We ain't going to get too weird. The Holy Spirit. David, uh, numerous times, has talked about that Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit experience that we have. And David will attest to it changes your life. You're no longer the same old person you was. You're no longer struggling to try to make things work because the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you. And because he's dwelling in here, you can do supernatural things. Philip, run to the chariot of the, the Enoch and ministered, led him to the Lord and baptized him and disappeared. That was supernatural. It wasn't something that normally happens. When Peter walked up and John walked up to the lame man and they said, silver and gold we don't have. We're broke right now. We give it all away. But in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. It was not their power that caused that man to rise. It was the power of the Holy Spirit living in them. And some people say that ended 2,000 years ago. No, it didn't happen that way. Understand what I'm going to say. I'm not bragging on me because I am nothing but lump of flesh just like everybody else. But there's something that dwells in here that can speak to the sick and see them healed. There's something that dwells in here can go up and see blinded eyes opened. I have seen that. <coughs> There's something in here that can say, stick your fingers in that deaf girl's ears and she'll hear. It's not me. It's the Holy Spirit. And he ain't just available for the preacher up here. He's available for every one of us. Everyone in this building. The next blessing I want to talk to you about is one we take for granted, I think, more than any of them, is the church. The Lord give us the church that we could gather strength one from the other. See, the church is a body. It's a body of believers. Now, if I come to church this morning and uh, I left my left leg at home and my right arm and my head... I don't think I could stand up here and preach, could I? The church is the same way. Everybody in this building this morning is part of the body of Christ. Everybody here has their job and their duty, their, their obligation. And our obligations, I hate to rattle anybody's theology, is not sitting in the chair and saying, oh my, that's wonderful. 
<laughs> no, we've got a job to do. We're called to be a church. Teresa, there's lost people out there, like you said, we need to reach. And if he's put that on your heart, get with it, girl. <laughs> get with it. This church, whether you believe it or not, this morning is ready to explode. It's right on the verge of leaving this earth like a rock. The community's watching this. They've watched that parking lot grow a little bit every week, ain't they, David? A little bit every week. It's getting ready to have something happen here that everybody's going to be filled with that Holy Spirit experience, David. And we'll be shouting, hooping, and hollering and having a big time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So maybe you're here this morning. We've done had people saved. I mean, that's glorious time, ain't it? Amen. Saved our last week. Saved last week, the week before. Man, I think it's awesome. But these blessings that the Lord has given us, if you're here this morning and you don't know him, you're not in relation with Chip with him, I invite you to come and fix that up right now. If you're sick in body, I invite you to grab a hold of that blessing and claim it for your life, for your sister. If you need deliverance from, some of us get in that junk on the computer, it's a lot of bad junk there. If you need deliverance from anything, God's here this morning to deliver you. If you ain't got two thin dimes to rub together, the Lord wants to bless you financially. Right. And if you don't have not had that Holy Spirit experience, as David said, I invite you to come try it. I guarantee you'll like it and you'll love it. Change it. And if you don't have a church body to belong to, please come join us. We'd love that.